Welcome to the BioVispanar channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of electrolytes under clinical biochemistry applications which are important for medical diagnostics. Electrolytes are essential for basic life functioning such as maintaining electrical neutrality in cells, generating and conducting action potentials in the nerves and muscle. Electrolytes come from our food and fluids. Our body easily holds 60 to 70 percent water, and the solvents include water, blood, and urine, typically convenient fluids to measure and sample from the patient for laboratory analysis of the electrolytes. Electrolytes, when dissolved, will display electrical charges depending on the species. For instance, sodium ions have a 1 plus positive charge, whilst chloride exhibits a 1 minus negative charge. The kidney removes electrolytes via the urine and serves as the main removal means. Alternatively, perspiration through the skin also contributes to removal of electrolytes especially during high metabolic activities. Roles of the electrolytes include balancing the amount of water in your body, balancing the body's acid or base level. It assists in electrical conductivity as dissolved electrolytes and assist in chemical reactions being part of the many ongoing biochemical reactions including muscle contractility or neural transmission. Ions are also coupled to protein transporters to enable chemicals co-transportation make sure that your nerves, muscles, the heart, and the brain work the way they should. Other roles of electrolytes are to move nutrients into your cells and for waste removal out of your cells. Sodium, potassium, and chloride are the significant electrolytes along with magnesium, calcium, phosphate, and bicarbonates. These electrolytes can have an imbalance, leading to either high or low levels. High or low levels of electrolytes disrupt normal bodily functions and can lead to life-threatening complications. In the next few moments, we will be sharing some of the clinical biochemistry reference range associated with the common electrolytes though they vary due to gender, age, and other factors as well as hospital-specific indicators. Serum sodium has a normal range of 135 to 145 millimoles per liter. The clinical significance associated with hyponatremia includes low dietary sodium intake, primary polydipsia, SIDH congestive heart failure, hepatic cirrhosis, failure of adrenal glands, hyperglycemia, or dyslipidemia. On the contrary, clinical manifestations associated with hypernatremia includes unreplaced fluid loss through the skin and gastrointestinal tract, osmotic diuresis, hypertonic saline administration amongst others. Next we have the serum potassium typically within the range of 3.6 to 5.5 millimoles per liter. Again similarly, below the range we have hypokalemia, and above the range we have hyperkalemia, and it is further categorized into mild, moderate, and severe forms. For hypokalemia, it could indicate hyperaldosteronism, and could also be triggered with the use of loop diuretics. Hyperkalemia on the other hand signals an increased release from cells as in metabolic acidosis, insulin deficiency, beta blocker or decreased potassium excretion as in acute or chronic kidney disease, aldosterone deficiency or resistance. Up next, we have serum calcium which has a typical range of 8.8 .8 to 10.7 mg per deciliter. Hypercalcemia occurs if serum calcium is above the levels and is associated with malignancy, hyperparathyroidism, chronic granulomatous disease. Below the range, we have hypocalcemia which sets in and it is indicative for acute pancreatitis, parathyroid hormone deficiency after thyroidectomy, neck dissection, resistance to parathormone, hypomagnesemia, sepsis. Like calcium, magnesium is present in the serum within the range of 1.46 to 2.68 mg per deciliter. Hypomagnesemia where serum magnesium 
is below the range can be rectified by increasing oral magnesium intake through magnesium supplements or magnesium rich food like whole grains or dark leafy vegetables hypomagnesemia could occur due to renal losses as in diuretics alcohol use disorder or gi losses as in diarrhea controlling magnesium intake will avoid hypermagnesemia next up bicarbonate serves as an important acid base buffering system within the blood and body fluids its normal range is 23 to 30 millimoles per liter and the increase depends on the body acid base status bicarbonate also known as hco3 is a byproduct of your body's metabolism your blood brings bicarbonate to your lungs and then it is exhaled as carbon dioxide your kidneys also help regulate bicarbonate bicarbonate is excreted and reabsorbed by your kidneys this regulates your body's ph or acid balance typically we see elevations in bicarbonate level due to increases in primary metabolic alkalosis or compensation to primary respiratory acidosis whereas decreases in bicarbonate levels is observed in primary metabolic acidosis or compensation to primary respiratory alkalosis next up we have serum chloride levels within a typical range of 96 to 106 millimoles per liter hyperchloremia could be due to normal saline infusion such as through drips during medical interventions whereas hypochloremia could be attributable to gastrointestinal loss as in diarrhea or in situations of renal losses with the use of diuretics for the phosphorus electrolyte the serum levels is at the range of 3.4 to 4.5 mg per deciliter the scenario of hypophosphatemia occurs when the levels falls below 2.5 mg per deciliter and could be attributable to refeeding syndrome vitamin d deficiency or hyperparathyroidism on the other hand hyperphosphatemia could arise due to hypoparathyroidism or chronic kidney disease let's take a quick look at sodium which is an important electrolyte sodium is a cation responsible for maintaining the extracellular fluid volume and for regulation of the membrane potential of cells sodium is exchanged along with potassium across cell membranes as part of active transport using sodium potassium atpase and assist in electrical conductivity for neural transmission moreover sodium regulation occurs in the kidneys where it is excreted when in excess or retained where needed by the body dietary intake and a balance of sodium levels is maintained by homeostatic control sodium is also additionally lost as perspiration through our skin as well during physical exertion typically the plasma sodium level hovers around 135 to 145 millimoles per liter hyponatremia is associated with neurological manifestations and symptoms might include headaches confusion and nausea Hypernatremia on the other hand manifests tachypnea sleeping difficulty and the general feeling of lethargic or restless the procedure involves the use of lithium heparin tubes qualified personnel use the standard phlebotomy equipment to draw blood sample for electrolyte analysis in a diagnostic laboratory often test for multiple electrolytes can be conducted in a single sitting under the electrolyte panel an electrolyte panel or serum electrolyte test refers to a blood test that measures levels of the body's main electrolytes summarized earlier being part of a routine blood screening or comprehensive metabolic panel it is used comprehensively to determine fluid imbalance or an imbalance in acid and base levels where required the doctor might also order an anion gap test might be ordered as well if needed if the anion gap is either too high or too low it may be a sign of a serious health problem the specific results will depend on which electrolyte is affected and whether levels are too low or too high do note that nn if your electrolyte levels 
were not in the normal range, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a medical problem needing treatment, though continued monitoring might be appropriate. I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates.